fish hatchery in Harvey is keeping busy right now. So this morning, Ansley Watson is taking a look at what's going on. Good morning, Ansley. Good morning, Vicki. Right behind me is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service trailer that's parked right here in the parking lot of the Marquette State Fish Hatchery. Now, right inside, they're already busy tagging fish such as lake trout, brook trout, and splake. The goal by Saturday is to tag over 200 thousand fish. So later in the hour, we're going to go inside this trailer. We're going to see just how this process is done and see if they can reach that goal. So stay with us. Reporting live in Harvey, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. Tagging like mad. All right. Thank you very much, Ansley. And it is uh, maybe being a little bit cooler might be a very good day for them to find someplace indoors. Welcome yeah, back. 10 after the hour, the Michigan State Fish Hatchery hard at work. The tagging process on various types of fish is now on. Ansley Watson is there this morning telling us how they do this. Good morning, Ansley. Good morning, Vicki. So just since the morning news has began, they have tagged just about 5,000 fish, so you can only imagine how efficient this process really is. Joining me this morning is Chuck, who is a senior vice president, vice biologist, yes. <laughs> and to talk to us about how this initiative started with this tagging. <laughs> so this initiative started with the uh, Council of Great uh, Council of Lake Committees of the Great Lakes Fishery Commission that wanted a mass marking program in the Great Lakes. They tasked a committee of uh, representatives of multiple agencies to scope out what was possible and then uh, this, uh, we rec made some recommendations. The states went and got us some money from Congress in the days of earmarks and started buying some these, this automated trailer here among other things. The Great Lakes Restoration Initiative then kicked in which is President Obama's initiative to restore the Great Lakes and that's funded the program since 2011 to the present day. Um, right now, we're, um, our program marks, marks and tags about 6.4 million lake trout a year across all the Great Lakes and also assists the states with managing their Chinook salmon fishery and we mark about 3 million fish there as well for the states all around Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. What kind of research are people finding through this? Well, uh, with, with lake trout, we're uh, finding, uh, estimating levels of natural reproduction, uh, and we're finding uh, uh, some good results in Lake Huron and some good results in Lake Michigan, especially in southwest Lake Michigan, where we're seeing a lot of wild fish that we can differentiate from the stock fish because they don't have a pin clip or a, or, or, or a foot or wire tag. With Chinook salmon, we're finding that during the summer uh, fishery, most of the fish that are being caught in any one jurisdiction are actually coming from all over the lake and even from Lake Huron and into Lake Michigan. So we're, we're seeing a lot of mixed fisheries based on stocking events that each of the states do, and they're contributing to everybody else's fishery, uh, regardless of where you are on Lake Michigan or Huron. Kevin, you're the fish biologist here. Walk us through the process of what is happening. All right, so the, we bucket the fish in into the trough up front there, and then Aaron is dipping the fish up into what is called the sorter. And there's two channels in there, and that measures each fish to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. We have six lines out here that it then distributes a fish to by, by sizes. Once the fish come to each line, then they come through the channels individually, and once they get down into here, uh, this is where they get the tag, photo wire tag, and the clip. And once that happens, it, it goes through a, uh, a QCD, quality control device, and that detects whether it has a tag and a clip. And if it is 100% successful, it sends it out back into the raceway where the hatchery wants it. If it's missing a tag or clip, it goes into a bucket, and that's what the people in the back will do those by hand. Now, describe the tag. You're showing us to showing us it, and it is tiny. Right. The, the tag is actually 1.1 uh, millimeters in length, uh, stainless steel, and laser etched uh, on there is a six-digit code. And that code tells us uh, what species of fish, what strain, uh, what hatchery the fish came from, and then also where it is stocked. Okay. Well, thank you, Kevin. Stay with us because behind us, Terry and Nancy are back with the reject fish, and we're going to see what they're doing back there. Stay with us. Reporting live in Harvey, Ansley Watson, TV6 News.
All right, thank you very much, Angie. That is absolutely fascinating. It's like a, you know, a combination of a Dr. Seuss Sneetch's machine there. It's like, yeah. just put them in and away they go. Yeah, a lot going on there. Wow. It's hard to pay attention. I was just watching the fish get <laughs> right. shot around. Amazing. <laughs> that is. But it, like you were saying, they've got a lot of information they must be collecting on that. And wow. uh, the lakes for us, we Welcome should be back. Well, quite the process is taking place at the Marquette State Fish Hatchery today. They're actually tagging hundreds of fish that will soon be released. Ansley Watson is there now to tell us a little bit more about the process. Of course, it's loud, so I can get away with saying this. Ansley, be careful around the fish. I know your history. With Good morning, Sam. So we just went through the process of the whole tagging process, but some of those fish don't necessarily go through what they need to be. So Terry, explain what's going on over here. I was calling them the reject fish earlier. Why did we say that? Well, what I'm doing is it's going through the machines. Each machine has a bucket and it drops down if it didn't get clipped or if it didn't get tagged. And then what I do is bring them back, look at the fish, see if the tag is on there or not, drop it down. If it's tagged, it goes out to the raceway. If it doesn't, then it drops into a bucket here, and then I've got to tag them by hand. What is the point of clipping the, these fins off? It shows that it's a planted fish. Okay. So if you catch this fish and that adipose fin is off, you know that that's a planted fish, and they ask that you turn it in to uh, somebody that's uh, by where they uh, planted the fish. They cut the head off and then they send it to Wisconsin. Uh, they split the head open, the nose, and look for the tag, put it under the microscope, and it tells everything about that fish, where it was from, what hatchery it came from, uh, when it was tagged, and uh, the, the fish's birth and when, wow. when it was done. So. A lot of information. Terry, I think I need to try this for myself. You think I could do this? Sure. All right, I'll yeah. hand the mic over to you real quick. All right. So explain just exactly what I need to do in here. Okay, you hold the fish by its head. What I usually do is grab it like this and then put it all the way to the back and then just clip. There you go. That's good. And you drop it down there. So now if this tag, which is placed in the nose of the fish, if it does have a tag, you're saying that there's a noise that you'll hear. Right. There's a, a magnetic thing down there that tells that the fish has a tag in it, so it goes right to the raceway. And if, if it doesn't, then it will go into this bucket. Now, Terry, you and your wife, Nancy, you said you've been doing this together for years. How many fish do you think that you've flipped? Oh, how many we've flipped? Just, we, just a huge number, isn't <laughs> a it? A huge number, yeah. We can do about 7,000 a day by hand. By hand? Right. Wow. So. Yeah, and these are lake trout? Yes. All right, Terry, I'll let you do your job. Okay. <laughs> and Chuck, I'm going to bring you over here and talk to you exactly. Sure. Why is this important that we're doing this? You're the senior biologist here. Yeah, well, it's important since we uh, this process allows us to evaluate all the different strains, stocking strategies, and locations, and the performance of these fish. By recovering these fish that are caught in sport, commercial and assessment fisheries and looking at the, the codes uh, on, on the tags, we can tell which lots of fish are doing the best. And we're, those, those are estimates of what we call post-release survival. Uh, the more tags we get back for a lot, uh, based on, you know, uh, as a proportion of what was stocked, the better survival they have. And that informs our, our hatchery rearing practices and our stocking decisions. Well, we're, the uh, objective of the lake trout program is to create self-sustaining populations. And whatever <clears throat> fish that we, we, we tag, we see on the spawning uh, shoals, they're likely contributing to some of that success that we see in wild fish. Likely, when we get an unclipped fish, or a fish without a quarter wire tag, that's likely lake produced. And we actually take a genetic sample of that and have it analyzed so we can determine its strain parentage. And that's going on right now for, for Lake Michigan. We have about 800 to 1,000 samples of unclipped fish that have been collected over several years. And those are being analyzed right now to, to determine their parentage. We'll use that, those results from that study to better inform 
on what strains we should be stocking in the future. Now I'm curious, these tags are itty bitty, like tiny, right yeah. on my pinky finger. They go on the nose. As these fish grow, do they not fall out? Well, we, we do look at uh, tag shedding. We're actually, these fish will sit in the hatchery now until next spring before they're stocked out. And we actually look at the, the rate of tag loss over that time period. And we, we, we've, we've documented that. And we're also, when we recover the fish, we look at the ratio of fish that have an adipose fin clip but don't have a tag in them. That'll give us an idea of tag loss at large. So at every stage of their, of their life cycle, we're estimating that tag loss and incorporating that into our calculations when we're analyzing the recovery data. Thank you so much for being with us, Chuck and Terry. This is so interesting. Thank you. Reporting live in Harvey, Ansley Watson, and we'll be back with more of your TV6 Morning News after the break.